Ancient building techniques are an excellent subject to explore if one wishes to understand just how advanced our hidden ancestors were. Additionally, it allows one to get a true insight into the contradictions currently upheld by academic institutes the world over. There still exists an extraordinarily diverse array of building techniques. Some, interestingly, appear to overlap even older advanced methods. For example, a stone boring technology, seemingly used upon many ancient monuments, in many cases it appears to have been deliberately used to slightly damage these ancient stones, leaving them etched with uncanny marks, possibly in an attempt to also leave their mark to prove their past existence, later to be realized by us, now laying within their very distant future. We feel that these marks, along with many other aspects of these ancient sites, indicates that many ancient civilizations have been and gone here upon our Earth. Ancient metal clamps used to seat enormous stones, precision machine-cut blocks, some left within quarries, clearly indicating machine manipulation, impossible block building, effortlessly fitting random-sized blocks perfectly together. Yet the most enigmatic of these ancient building features, which many suspect was indeed somehow connected to the construction of said sites, has to be the protuberances. Rarely mentioned within history books, yet these protuberances are present on many of the most ancient of block structures, which can be found all over the world. No one seems to know what these protuberances were placed upon these structures for. The biggest of these, undoubtedly carved into the still in situ megaliths at Yangshan Quarry, a feature we have previously noted and pondered over. Not only do these enigmatic notches suggest a past, world-going, highly advanced civilization having once prospered here upon our planet, but a feature known as the Boss Mark, found deep within the Great Pyramid of Khufu, may link, for the first time, the builders of the Great Pyramids to ancient structures found elsewhere on Earth. Furthermore, the methods used by the pyramid builders are, interestingly, the same methods used by builders of the other sites containing protuberances. This strategic building method, meaning that their ruins have outlived, we feel, many other ancient civilizations now lost to history. Their capability to move such mind-bogglingly huge stone blocks and their ability to create such erosion-resistant structures, indicate to us that the builders of these sites may have lived an unimaginably long time ago, and probably chose to create such earth-shifting structures in a bid to indeed survive the eons. Were they doing so in an attempt to leave their legacy on our planet? Or maybe they were, and are, still trying to tell us something. Only time will tell. Inside a tunnel system carved from the solid limestone bedrock in the desert of Egypt, lay 24 black granite boxes cut with the precision our modern technologies do not possess. Shaped from as one granite and extremely hard stone. These massive boxes remain a profound mystery for scholars who are unsure as to what their true purpose was, or indeed how old they are. Numerous well-known figures have concluded the hieroglyphics written upon them is of such poor quality it is regarded as graffiti, many people believe Egyptian kings claimed precision made ruins as their own. This is one of the main hypotheses put forward for the Egyptians lack of any records of the pyramid's construction, often decorating them in a more primitive form of writing style. The suspected sarcophagi range in weight between 50 and 100 tons. Their real purpose or maybe indeed their function, remains unclear, although they were clearly of importance, they were cut with such precision in fact they would have remained airtight for eons. Researchers like Brian Foster theorize they are clear examples of lost ancient high technology, created before the time of the dynastic Egyptians. Whatever their true purpose was, the truth is that they are beyond magnificent. Well-regarded studies, for example, into the erosion evident on the Sphinxes of Giza, have proven to indicate they may be far older than the Egyptian civilizations. By several hundred thousand years, some even claiming they show evidences of past submersions. The Serapium of Saqqara is located to the northwest of the famous Pyramid of Djoser. 
This necropolis found near Memphis, Egypt, is believed in modern academia to have been built sometime around 1300 BC by Ramesses II. Just what kind of technology, or indeed what kind of man, could have cut, transported, stacked and placed blocks of stones weighing up to 100 tons on top of each other with such accuracy? In 1879, British archaeologist Wayneman Dixon successfully retrieved a number of mysterious artifacts from within the infamous lower northern shaft of the Great Pyramid of Khufu. One of these artifacts was a small piece of a square wooden rod which has since disappeared, the only artifact to conveniently go missing and the only artifact which could have produced an accurate dating for what seems was a rather elaborate prior attempt to overcome a sophisticated array of blocking stones and vertical passageways which confront all who try to breach the innermost sanctums of this mysterious pyramid. The reason for this past mission, or indeed who undertook such an attempt, remain a mystery, but their motive will soon become clear. One of Wayneman's other finds, resembling a small grappling hook with two rivets, matches two holes in a square rod still lodged up in the vertical northern shaft, clearly left by these wannabe tomb raiders. It seems that these highly talented, acrobatic grave robbers couldn't make it any further, and once one becomes aware of the existence of a large hidden chamber built into the pyramid's design, placed just above this unexplored shaft, you will inevitably begin to wonder what could possibly be hiding up there. Indeed, it's a well-known fact that the builders of these structures were notorious for their superhuman efforts in concealment. Huge multi-ton blocking stones in front of the entrances to their kings and treasures, and indeed in front of virtually every interior shaft and room within the Great Pyramid of Khufu. The upper region of this northern shaft constitutes the last remaining unexplored areas due to the impossible access angle. We know it's there, and all we have to do is apply existing technology in getting in there, Rudolf Gattenbrink told the press. It must be noted, although the mention of tombs has been made, the evidence to suggest such is based solely upon a number of parchments and a single mark found within an interior chamber of the pyramid naming a gang and the 4th dynasty Egyptian pharaoh Khufu. Egyptologists have taken these fragmentary factors and concluded that all pyramids were therefore built as tombs, the Great One being built over a 10 to 20 year period, concluding around 2560 BC. It seems the entire thesis of ancient Egyptian legacy is built around a few mentions of the pyramids as tombs. No mummies or burial artifacts except a tiny box claimed to be that of the sarcophagus of Khufu has ever been found in the pyramids. Additionally, and perhaps more importantly, Khufu's Egyptian civilization, along with all subsequent and prior dynasties, 
catalogue tremendous details regarding their existence, yet all, for some reason, seemingly forget to mention the construction of the biggest, most mysterious structures on Earth, or indeed how they did it. What could there possibly be hidden within this chamber, this unexplored and clearly sought-after secret room, a room which is seemingly unrobbable? With mainstream Egyptologists, archaeologists and academic historians alike insisting that these amazing pyramids were once unquestionably tombs which were robbed completely over the millennia. Whatever this room contains may settle this once and for all. During the past few years, we have covered many aspects of Mankuri, Khafra, and Khufu, the three great pyramids of Giza. We have explored numerous amazing facts regarding these structures, which have remained secret for many years. As the interest has grown regarding these three amazing structures, more people with suspicions, hypothesis, and technical and intellectual talents are fortunately beginning to approach these mysterious and wonderful structures in more explorative ways. We are experiencing the beginning of an ancient Egyptian renaissance, thanks to the gift of modern technology. At the beginning of this year, an international team of researchers began investigating the buildings from afar, gazing at them with unusual cameras. Using state-of-the-art infrared heat detection technology, they have discovered some surprising anomalies regarding the heat signatures visible on their faces. What these thermal anomalies reveal are undiscovered shafts, more than likely leading to additional and undiscovered secret tombs deep within these amazing pyramids. The thermal scanning that they have successfully completed has revealed that there are many of these temperature fluctuations, in many areas undocumented as containing anomalies. Thus, what the team has done is pinpoint unexplored shafts dotted across the pyramids. The team also found a particularly impressive anomalous signature located on the eastern side of the Khufu Pyramid, very close to ground level. From the beginning, the team had always maintained that they would publicly disclose their findings. All of the staggering finds were made public by Antiquities Minister Mamdu El Damati. During a press briefing, quote, there is something like a small passage in the ground that you can see, leading up to the pyramid's ground, reaching an area with a different temperature. What will be behind it? said El Damati. The scanning was done throughout a 24-hour period, allowing the researchers to monitor subtle temperature changes as the pyramids heated up and then cooled down during the day and night. Though the huge granite and limestone blocks which make up most of the pyramid this technology was capable of recognizing the slight differentials in their temperature. By monitoring the speed of this heating and cooling, thanks to these miraculous cameras, the researchers were able to isolate several persistent anomalies. Thus, they may have just unlocked more of the pyramid's secrets in one day using state-of-the-art technology than Egyptian antiquities or archaeologists worldwide have in more than 100 years. While the difference in temperature between most adjacent limestone blocks was between 0.1 to 0.5 degrees Celsius, the largest of heat anomalies discovered on and within the Great Pyramid was an impressive 6 degrees warmer than the surrounding bricks. So far, there are plenty of theories being put forward as to what these heat anomalies might indicate. Not surprisingly, with the leading assumptions being that of just empty areas, a hypothesis I'm sure some would like to make a reality. The good news is that the study, which is called Operation Scan Pyramids, will continue. Next, the researchers intend to use cosmic particles called radiographic muons to create a 3D reconstruction of the pyramids of Giza in an attempt to map all the secret chambers and passageways within the pyramids. We will keep you posted on their future finds. Who built the Great Pyramids? How? Why? questions many have attempted but seemingly failed to answer. Although claimed as tombs, with the different internal chambers within the largest, Khufu, named in representation of this purpose. Interestingly, Khufu, or Cheops, is the only one of the three pyramids with internal chambers. The other smaller two merely have tunnels beneath. An enigmatic box whose lid has long been lost to history lay within this enormous structure, long claimed to have been the sarcophagus of Khufu. However, although suspiciously small, no one seems to be able to explain how they got it into the chamber in the first place. 
It is as if the pyramid was built around, as it doesn't fit through any of the known entranceways. Since the 19th century, when these chambers were first rediscovered, a tremendous amount of research, though it must be noted, always supervised by official Egyptian antiquity academics, nonetheless, remarkable discoveries have at least been partially shared with the world. Most notably, Gantenbrink's door. Yet the tomb of Osiris, where this once inaccessible tunnel led, was, once the media was permitted back into the location, found empty, claimed by officials as being found conveniently vacant. A room only discovered thanks to 21st century technology, according to mainstream Egyptologists, was somehow looted. However, there still lay many mysteries within this most intriguing of structures, and we would expect at least one, or possibly many more, which no matter how long it takes us to rediscover them, will be too big to hide. For example, although we once thought the tomb Gantenbrink discovered was inaccessible, the chamber at the top of the structure, one of considerable size, estimated at 30 square meters, is so inaccessible. It was only found with technology used to register cosmic rays. a technology usually utilized in high-energy particle physics, capable of tracking particles called muons, produced when cosmic rays strike atoms in the upper atmosphere. These incredibly sensitive detectors were first developed for use in particle accelerators, but they have also been used to gaze into the inner bowels of many geological and ancient artificial features. In December 2015, Physicist Kunihiro Morishima of Nagoya University, Japan, placed detectors inside the Queen's chamber to detect muons passing through the pyramid. Thus, any large chamber still hidden within the pyramid would be detected due to a higher register of muons than expected from denser angles. The chamber's discovery was corroborated by two other teams of physicists. All three teams observed a large void in the same location above the Grand Gallery. It was a big surprise, says Tayubi. We're really excited, he continued. The researchers say it might even be made up of two or more smaller spaces. Tayubi suggests that it could be, quote, a second Grand Gallery. It is a discovery which we are finding. In 1996, Italian mineralogist Vincenzo Di Michele spotted an unusual yellow-green gem within one of Tutankhamun's necklaces. The jewel was tested and found to be made of a type of glass known as Libyan desert glass. The interesting thing regarding this, however, is its origins. To this day, no one seems to be able to explain how it formed. No trace of a crater has ever been discovered. An ancient meteorite, or indeed outer space object, scorching across the skies of Egypt is the basis for many religious teachings within this once amazing ancient civilization. They associated the objects and the flaming tails during such events with that of a phoenix, and the collected items, presumably nearly always meteorites, were then hammered down into wares. Nine small beads, stored at the University College London's Petrie Museum, dated to around 3200 BC, were found in necklaces along with exotic terrestrial minerals such as lapis lazuli, agate, and gold. They are some of the earliest iron artifacts ever found, and archaeologists have confirmed that they came from outer space. Meteoric iron is much harder and more brittle than copper. Quote, they were rolled and hammered into shape. This is a very different technology from the usual stone bead drilling, and shows quite an advanced understanding, showing the metalsmiths knew exactly how to work this rather difficult material," said Thilo Rarin, a University College London professor of archaeology. 
when American geophysicist John Wasson was consulted regarding King Tut's strange gem, he curiously linked the event with one within an extremely remote forest of Siberia, an event we have covered before. Quote, when the thought came to me that this required a hot sky, I thought immediately of the Tunguska event, he told Horizon. In 1908, a massive explosion flattened 80 million trees in Tunguska, Siberia. And whatever landed there over a century ago is still there, and it kills any living organism which settles above it. And what is most interesting surrounding all of this is the ancient Egyptian accounts of what they did with a rather peculiar, rather special type of object that was, at one point, retrieved from the glassy sands of Libya. A particularly different object, which they called a phoenix egg. That hieroglyph state was secreted away within a secret chamber deep within the Great Pyramid. We have covered before the hypothesis that these stories etched in hieroglyphics may be far older than the Egyptian culture which may have preceded it. Yet the question is clear. What could this phoenix egg be? The evidence for the existence of a past, now lost, yet once highly advanced and global civilization should now be overwhelming to anyone who has spent any amount of time researching the anomalies and similarities within ancient sites worldwide found on nearly every continent on Earth. There are countless sites claimed as a certain civilization's work Yet these claims not only often lack any explanation as to how these cultures built said ruins, or how, if built by said culture, they can be connected to other sites located in other countries thousands of miles away. These facts are simply academically ignored. Interestingly, another site we can now add to this list of locations that the known polygonal building civilizations pinpointed within the Arab Emirates. According to academic study, quote, the hilly archaeological site not only provides the earliest known evidence of an agricultural village in the United Arab Emirates, but also contains villages, burial grounds, and agricultural infrastructure. The largest collection in the UAE of tombs and buildings from this period is located at Hilly. A number of these Bronze Age structures are located within the Hilly Archaeological Park, and are open to the public." End quote. We concur that the site is clearly from a range of different ages, yet along with these modern-looking buildings is one structure which we found incredibly interesting, known as the Hilly Grand Tomb. Like many other structures of unexplainable origin or of lost purpose, attributed to that of a tomb. Yet due to the polygonal masonry technique, a now lost technology found the world over, clear for all to see, and of an exquisite advanced quality. This labeling of a mere tomb, to us, has been brought into question. For simply due to the method of its creation, we can state that we do not know who, when, or indeed why such a structure in the Arab Emirates was created. It is undoubtedly a small building, yet one of profound features. Thus, it is a place which we find highly compelling. Machu Picchu, unquestionably one of the most recognizable ancient ruins on Earth. It is a place that is found high on countless astute explorers' bucket lists, and for good reason. Placed far away from modern civilization, requiring a 10-hour trek along the Inca Trail to reach. However, when one arrives at the site, they are rewarded with an astonishing array of ancient feats of engineering. There are many anomalous characteristics of this pre-Incan site, which although ignored by academia, we intend to explore here on our channel. One of these peculiar and as yet unexplained features is the Temple of Three Windows. Located west of the main square, this sacred temple, formed with the use of gigantic megalithic blocks, is adorned with three still-existing trapezoidal-shaped windows, aligned with the path of the sun, allowing its rays to pass through them at differing times of the day, brightly illuminating the sacred plaza beyond. It is one of the many inexplicable features of Machu Picchu, and indeed pre-Incan Peru, 
which laughs in the face of currently attested academic theory and its attempts to explain how such sites were initially built. Most funded archaeologists claim Machu Picchu was constructed as an estate for an Incan emperor known as Pachacuti between 1438 to 1472. However, we disagree with this claim. Due to the exquisite nature of the site's construction, the clearly advanced levels of architecture, specifically but not exclusively pertaining to its complex irrigation, sanitation, and drainage systems, and indeed, the precision displayed with the use of such enormous multi-ton stones. These ancient megaliths were not only somehow carried to the tops of these mountaintop fortresses, but as the temple of the three windows clearly displays, masterfully cut to form the windows, accomplishing such a refined finish to their surfaces that to claim they were chiseled out using primitive tools, we find not to be a viable or indeed logical conjecture. It is clear to us that whoever created this remarkable temple had at their disposal not only advanced highly capable transport systems, but stone-cutting tools far out of the reach of the academically claimed constructors. Furthermore, present upon the stones of the Temple of Three Windows, also visible throughout ancient Peru, are enigmatic marks left by a tool that we, the public, are yet to be informed of. Intriguingly, these marks are not only visible upon the stones within Peru, but are also in abundance at the ancient quarry within Aswan. We have in the past covered the pink granite columns found within the ancient temples of Baalbek, transported from the same quarry to Baalbek, a distance of over 1,000 miles. These columns, we hypothesize, link the temple to the ancient pyramids, and these enigmatic stone-cut marks present at Machu Picchu, we assert, connect all three. We believe that as more detailed alternative research is undertaken upon these sites, the connections between them, or more specifically, the true creators of said sites, will become apparent as the same. Both religious and evolution theories, in their current forms, stifle this truth by their very nature. Yet, thankfully, as more and more curious individuals relinquish themselves of the rigid and conformist chains of ideologies in favor of a pursuit of the truths of our Earth, the reality of history will inevitably be unraveled. Who built the Temple of Three Windows? How did they construct such an astonishing site built with such aligned precision with such enormous stones? It is undoubtedly highly compelling.
An announcement that seemingly slipped us by was made recently within Egypt. This announcement pertaining to an amazing discovery made within an area of the Giza Plateau that for a number of decades has been conveniently shut off from the public. Although the location is claimed to be a military training base, archaeologists have apparently been secretly beavering away within this remote slice of antiquity. Announced by the Supreme Council of Egyptian Antiquities, Egyptian authorities have apparently found the mysterious traces of the legendary Fourth Lost Pyramid of the Plateau. This provocative announcement stirred up a gale of protest among many Egyptologists, and the reason for this may be because the discovery might turn out to be highly controversial. Although the pyramid is in a very bad state, and this may be due to its immense age, with only a few rows of blocks remain, and these surviving blocks clearly displaying evidence to indicate that the missing blocks have simply eroded away over the eons. This ruin may not be the most important find in the area, or indeed, the purpose for the video. Along with these pyramidal remains at the site is another amazing anomaly. In the middle of this mysterious desert, an enormous staircase has been found, plunging into the desert floor. Seemingly excavated before this announcement and left for those who were fortunate enough to get access to the area to rediscover and photograph. This enormous staircase plunges straight through a limestone basin many meters in depth. This surgical slice has revealed an astonishing implication. It has revealed that the Giza Plateau does indeed extend this far. Not only that, but it demonstrates the sheer, unimaginable cubic size of this area of stone. A block of stone that was apparently man-made. Where this staircase actually leads to is as yet unknown, although it is thought to drop far below that which is currently visible, and preliminary scans of the area are suggesting that it plunges through the plateau deep into an ocean of groundwater below. By examining the pictures of the discovery, it appears that the site has indeed been excavated from the sand having most likely been submerged from view beforehand. The question is, who did these excavations? Who built this unbelievable structure, or indeed, the mind-bogglingly enormous Giza Plateau? Who built the pyramids and sphinx upon it? Where did such an enormous stone plateau come from? How did they shape and carve such mysterious structures with such blocks? Or perhaps, most importantly of all, where does this staircase lead? Did whoever undertake this excavation task manage to discover where it led? More research and exploration will undoubtedly be undertaken over the next few years. We will, of course, keep you posted.